Hi, this is Craig. Welcome back to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. We live in Canada, which means our boat stays under one of these winter covers for almost half a year. You might be wondering how much work is involved to go from this to this. And let me just say that even if your boat needs no repairs at all, you still need to wash it, deoxidize it, wax it, and maybe put a fresh coat of bottom paint on. And you have to do all of that before the official crane launch day. That's why episode five of Cruising Off Duty is called, How Much Work Is a Sailboat? And don't worry, this is not gonna be a boring episode where you watch me polish my boat. It's all gonna be time-lapse and drone videos. So stay tuned. Winter is a bleak and miserable time for us. Last winter, after a particularly bad snowfall, I couldn't even make it into the yard to check out my boat cover. So I did this drone video and sent it out on Facebook to the other NSC members so that they could check out their cover as well. You see, all of these winter covers have some sort of rib system. Some are store-bought, which are tubes of piping, and some are homemade, which are just two by fours. But if you get a heavy enough snowfall, the whole rib system will just collapse down on your boat. So it's always good to check your boat a few times during the winter. But it is depressing. As you know from episode one, Janice absolutely hates the winter. And I'm not a fan either. So we can't wait to retire, buy that catamaran, and live in some sort of Caribbean climate. We will never again have to worry about the sailing season coming to an end and looking forward to the dreadful job of winterizing your water lines and building these structures to put a cover over your boat so the snow and ice doesn't damage the deck. There is our boat right there. And as you can see, a few of the back ribs had fallen over on their side and some of the snow was starting to collect. So that told me I had to fight through the snow and get in there and clear it all off and replace those ribs. Okay, all this bleak snow and sad music is making me depressed. So let's move on to the spring. Oh, it's so sunny and nice. That's when even more work begins, but at least it's sunny and we're in a great mood. Okay, what you're watching us do here is wax the boat, but I didn't film the stuff that came before this. First, we had to take that depressing winter cover off and all the ribs, then we had to wash it to get off the grit, and then we deoxidize, which is sort of like a wax, and you buff it and it takes the cloudy oxidization off the fiberglass. And then finally, you're at this stage where you get to polish the entire boat. And if you look closely at this time lapse, we are not very happy with how it's coming out. We keep looking at it and redoing spots over and over. We learned something here. The cloudy side or the shady side of the boat waxes real nice, but the sunny side just did not want to buff in. And we decided that's enough of that for today. We're gonna start painting the bottom and come back and do the waxing later. You can see us right about now deciding this waxing isn't working and we give up. So we decide it's time to start with the bottom paint. To do bottom paint, you need to first tape the edge so you don't get bottom paint on your nice gel coat. In our freshwater river, we don't need to put ablative paint like they do in salt water. So we just put this VC-17, which is really just a copper paint. And all that does is stop things from growing on the bottom of your boat. We don't have to worry about barnacles or other things like that. Just mostly algae grows on the bottom. So you see Janice taking over for the taping while I go and get the paint mixed. And we'll fast forward the already fast forward video to show you us painting. So here you see me applying the VC-17, which is sort of like a coppery color paint. Over time it'll go gray and then over further time you'll see it get all splotchy like my bottom paint already looked before I applied this fresh coat. But since we're not racers, we don't really care too much if a little algae grows on the bottom. Really we're doing this more for vanity. That way on crane lifting day when our boat is flying high above all the other members of the NSC, we can point up and say, yep, that's our boat. Realistically having VC-17 paint on the bottom of our boat probably makes about one quarter of one knot of speed difference, but it sure looks pretty when we first put it on. After all this, the next step is to uh, get lifted in on crane lifting day, but make note of this crane right here. We still have one big job and that's putting our mask back on after we're in the water. Not every club makes you take your mast off in the off season, but NSC does, and Janice hates it. So that's one more thing to look forward to in the south. 
Okay, it's finally commercial crane lift-in day. The club pays two large commercial cranes to come in and lift all the boats that are too heavy to be lifted in by the masting crane. The Nepean Sailing Club runs throughout the year mostly by all the hours of the members volunteering their time. All the people you see in the tow boats and working on the docks with hard hats on are all members volunteering their time. The only people paid to be there are the crane operators. I did my part that day. On this day I volunteered to do this time-lapse video of the cranes moving our boats. I did a drone video of it from above which you'll see in a second and I was also a member of one of the crane crews helping to lift in boats. It was a long and tiring day. So let's just add up all the days it's going to take us to get our boat ready. We spent one day taking the winter cover down and the ribs. We spent one day washing and deoxidizing the boat. We spent two days properly waxing and bottom painting the boat. We spent this day doing the crane crew and I still have one more day to put our masks on with everybody else. You'll notice in the background that the yard is so big that the far crane had to move over closer to the camera in order to get all the rest of the boats. There's got to be one in every crowd. Even though we put big caution tape around it and cordoned off an area for my tripod with a note saying, don't touch this camera, time-lapse photography in progress, this guy just had to stick his face in front of the camera. Oh well, what are you going to do? At least because it was time-lapse, his face was only there for a nanosecond, but I know who you are. I'm just glad he didn't knock over the tripod and ruin the entire time-lapse video. You'd think the big yellow caution tape would tell you to stay away, but mm, maybe not. Anyway, as you can see from this time lapse, this was a very long day and many, many boats, I think 90 in total this year, were pulled out by the cranes. Like I said, this club is all volunteer run and I'm part of a couple of committees. One is the Harbour Committee and they've been asking me to use my drone to take aerial photography and videography of the club during the different seasons. So at one point during this day, I had to break away from my crane crew, bust out my drone and take some aerial photography. Of course it wouldn't be a cruising off duty episode if I didn't have at least some drone footage, right? I don't want to disappoint, so here comes the drone footage. It looks funny seeing all these boats with no masts. It also looks a little funny to see empty slips because the Nepean Sailing Club is always sold out. But you gotta remember, all the smaller boats can go in anytime they want with the two club cranes. As long as your boat is under 10,000 pounds, you can load in anytime you want. Ah, there's my baby. Although it looks really funny without its mast. I don't think I'll ever be a power boater. All those little people with hard hats on are all members of the club that are volunteering. The guys over by the boats are in charge of putting the straps on the boats, and the guys over on the docks are in charge of splashing the boats down safely in the water and releasing the straps. The guys in the red boat are also volunteers. Their job is to be a tow boat. If your boat splashes down and you can't start your engine right away, they just tow you away so the next boat can come in. It's a very efficient process. Well, that's it for crane lift-in day. So all we have to do now is pick a day for all of us to get together and put up our masts. And with only a six month sailing season, we get to it pretty quick. Within a couple of weeks, this is what the club looks like. Pretty much everybody has their mast up and hard pressed to even find a couple of empty slips. This portion of the Ottawa River is quite the sailing mecca. Nepean Sailing Club is the biggest, but there's also the Britannia Club and there's a club in Elmer. Between the three clubs, there are a lot of sailboats. Well, that's the end of this episode. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. If you do, please hit like on YouTube. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks a lot.